Ah, great outdoors. <laughs> will do. Hello all my fishy friends and welcome back to another Stay Fishy Adventure. Today's episode is all about the food. We're out on the lake once again in the bad boy kayak, me and the Tynster, and we're going after micro salmon. And if that doesn't make any sense, you'll see throughout the video what I'm talking about. These are landlocked sockeye salmon, which are some of the highest quality meat of salmon in the world. So I'm really excited to get the lines in here. I got a really good recipe going for you guys today. So stick around. It's going to be a fun episode. Let's do it. All right, so what we're going with today, very simple, yet elegant in a way. Got my Brad's KCP. I'm actually gonna stick with this. I bought some spin glows, and so you know, this I'm not a pro at this style of fishing. I've only been out on this like one time ever, and it was with my good friend Cameron Black. And I must say, he knows quite a bit more about this style of fishing than I do. So I'm just kind of winging it today. I have uh, everything that I need to catch them. Basically, I have my Brad's Dodger, a little flashy thing, and I have this little spinny thing on the end here. But I also have, but I also have Green Giant. They love corn, apparently. I don't know why. There's obviously no corn in this lake, but we're going to put corn on the hook and start trolling, see if we can get our first bite. And, of course, I forgot a can opener, so we're going to go the old-fashioned Jimmy rig way. I'm going to use the scissors and just stab a hole in the dang thing. scary but it worked just one piece of corn on here for now I might get a little more Western with it as we get going here but I'm gonna get my other rod rig this is a lake you can actually use two rods in which is convenient for a guy like me who's just one lowly man out here in this big lake on his tiny little kayak I don't have a depth finder I don't have any any way of finding where these fish are but I got some information before I came up here today that these fish will probably be sitting at anywhere from 20 to 30 feet. So I'm probably going to have to go double that, probably like 60 feet back behind me to get anywhere close to that depth. So nothing left to do but try. Literally got hit already. Oh my God, I just had one. Talk about instant gratification. Oh, just kidding. That's bottom. <laughs> Fish on, fish on, he's on there, he's on there. We've only gone about 100 yards, guys, and we got one. I'm just gonna take this really easy because these things have super, super soft mouths. I do not want to let them wiggle off. Tense moments here, tense moments. Haven't even got our second rod in the water. Oh my God, he's there, he's there, he's there. Oh, it's a really nice one too, guys. Oh, this kid, it's a pike minnow. Wah, 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 wah. So these things are called pike minnows, you guys. We're not going to eat this thing. It's not not the tastiest of, of little morsels, but it's a fish nonetheless, and uh, that's a good start. These things actually have a bounty on them here in Washington State and in Oregon and Idaho as well, just because they eat so many baby salmon, but obviously they can't make it to the ocean here. Uh, but we're going to let this guy go. Oh, there he is, there he is, we got one. We got one, everybody, we got one. Is he still there? He might still be there, I'm gonna reel in just in case. These things are definitely not the biggest creatures in the water, so a lot of times they'll get that real vicious first hit and they won't fight at all until you get them in, but I don't really care, we're not out here for the fight, we're out here for the meat. It's kind of holding down like he's still there. Just keep going nice and slow. Yep, he's there. We got one, littles. Just kidding. We don't have ones. Darn it. Well, everybody, it's a new day. If you couldn't tell already, we bailed on that last bit of the episode. It got a little too cold. 
got a little too nasty out. And so we bailed. Ah, oh, I didn't take my straps off. That's all right, stay there. Ah, uh, joke's on me. Left my boat straps on. Okay, and we're back. Joke's on me, but we came back to the lake. We brought a knife to a gunfight, if you will, with those kayaks, because the wind picked up, our batteries died, and we really couldn't get those fish the way we wanted to. I ended up getting one, but we got the big boat now. If you guys have never seen this before, this is old white. This is my 16-foot jet boat. She is sexy as could be. We got depth finders this time. We got down riggers. We got actual kokanee fishing rods. You can see from Okuma, the Okuma, the Okuma kokanee black rods. And we're gonna go out here and get us a few more fish to complete this catch and cook out here in the middle of the lake. So once I do get those fish, I'm gonna set up everything in the boat, get set up, have my nice little kitchen belt here. And we're gonna make a gourmet recipe right here in the very middle of the lake. Just look at where we're at now. This is what it's supposed to be like up here. We got Mount St. Helens up over here. We got a beautiful lake waiting for us. Let's get in the water, let's catch some fish. Bottom, guys. Just guys, these things have very soft mouths. Again, like I said before, so we have to be very gentle, very gentle bringing them in. I just put this one out. This one has the Brad's mini coconut cut plug on it, and that's exactly what it did. Caught a coconut right away. Okay, he's right here. He's right here. He's right here. There he is. There he is. One little dude. Into the net. Into the net. Please, got him. Yeah. That didn't take long at all, everybody. And there it is, our first coconut. So there they are, you guys. There you can see. If you can look up a picture of a sockeye salmon, we'll put one in the bottom of the screen here. You can really see but this is a micro sockeye salmon. You're going to be amazed by the color of this meat here. So we'll get him bonked, get him bled, get him in the bucket. Let's get this one more. So I saw these things on the depth finder. That's the beauty of having a little more advanced technology in the boat. I saw these things about eight feet above where I had my downrigger down there. I was at 32 feet, moved it up to 28 and instantly got bit. Nice and easy, nice and easy here. Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is. Stay in there, stay on there. Yeah, there we go. Kokanee number two in the boat. Ow, got me, he got me. He drew blood, he's fighting back. This thing's got a mind of his own. There he is, Kokanee number two, woohoo. Okay, so now we've got a couple of fish. There's one piece of my recipe that needs a little preparation here. So I'm gonna grab a little, little pot here. Not the kind you guys are thinking of. Take it easy. Gutter mines out there, you guys. You guys all have gutter mines. I'm gonna fill this up with a little bit of water, just like so. And then into my con cooler I go for the secret ingredient of this recipe. Dried morel mushroom. If you guys didn't see the videos where I was out picking these things, it was a phenomenal morel mushroom season. So going back into the logs and the videos and uh, check out a couple of those videos where I went out and I found a bunch of morels. It's awfully fun, awfully fun to watch. So I'm gonna take a handful of these bad boys, I'm gonna put them right in my water here. And you guys are gonna see here in just a minute or two, I'm gonna get them nice and submerged and wet. These things are gonna completely come back to life like the day I picked them. It's pretty impressive. So you can actually go back and see these mushrooms the day I grabbed them off the ground and then you'll be able to come back and see them come back to life and look exactly the same, just like they did when I picked them. So leave those out, leave them in the sun for a little bit, let that water kind of get warm, and then that'll really help our recipe be amazing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our gourmet mid-lake recipe here. So I'm gonna take these kokanee, I'm gonna scale them up, I'm gonna get them all cleaned off, and then I'm gonna get them on the grill, and then I'm gonna start in on my panty dropper meal that we're gonna make right here in the dead center of the lake here. So let's get this underway. Okay, so I'm gonna be cooking these kokanee whole today. So the first thing I wanna do is try to get as many of these scales off as possible. You can see kinda how easy that starts. Just take your knife, Rub it right along it and try to get all those little mini scales off. You can see it almost happening right in front of your eyes here. And that way you're not gonna get all that kind of scaly mess on the barbecue and in your meal while you're going to eat it. So these things are very, very shiny and bright and it's because of these little micro scales here. Cause again, these are micro salmon. So and we're gonna be eating the whole fish here, skin and all. So I wanna make sure it's nice and cleaned off for us. You can 
instantly see the quality of that meat inside those things. Just a blood red, beautiful color, just like a salmon color. Uh, just because again, once again, I'm gonna say it again, these are a little miniature salmon that can't make it to the ocean. These things are landlocked. So fish number one, ready to go. For our cooking here, I'm gonna actually put these things on tin foil, but I'm gonna keep them kind of open faced on the grill here. Uh, but I just want this so that the skin, I want that skin uh, in the meal because it's gonna add a lot of flavor to this recipe. So I wanna make sure to use a little aluminum foil to keep that stuff from burning uh, right onto the top of the grill top there. So, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna braise these things. I'm gonna take my knife and make some nice cuts, even with the bones. Do about three of them on each side. That's gonna allow that thing to cook evenly, one. And two, it's gonna allow that seasoning that I put in there to go very nicely into the meat, rather than just all sitting on up the outside of that skin. There we go. Doesn't get any fresher than this, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you what, they're still wiggling out here in the lake. So, all I got is some Weber roasted garlic seasoning. I'm gonna go very simple on this because a lot of the flavor that I'm gonna have here is gonna be coming from my sauce that I'm about to show you guys. Get that nice impression of the meat. A little bit inside, a little bit outside. There's not a lot of salt in that seasoning, so it might look like I'm putting a lot on there, but really, in reality, I'm just adding a little bit of garlic and a little bit of herb to the outside of that fish. So these are ready to go on the grill. So now for our famous Alfredo sauce. This is one of my very favorite things to cook. It goes well with all different kinds of fish, all different kinds of meats and proteins. And it's way better than buying the jarred Alfredo sauce at the store. So we're gonna start off with a little bit of garlic. Chop this stuff up. It's gonna go right in the bottom of the pan. Now this recipe takes quite a bit of heavy whipping cream, garlic, love and magic as you're making this here. So we're in the middle of a rocking boat in the middle of the, of, the, of the lake. So it'll be magic if we don't cut ourselves or, uh, or burn something out here. One more chunk of garlic there. Garlic's gonna go right in the bottom. We're gonna use a pretty healthy chunk of butter here. Might even add a little more after this. We're gonna do, I have a little bit of an organic Italian herb seasoning here. It's a nice little paste. It works great for camping or cooking out on the water like this. Give a squirt of that in there. Then, our morel mushrooms, last but not least. You can see how much how much life came back to these things. They look like I just pulled them off the ground. So I'm gonna take these things, I'm gonna dice them up nicely, nice and small, so that they cook into this, into this uh, Alfredo nicely instead of having these big chunks in there. Looking good. These are all gonna go right in the bottom of the pan. Okay, so right on to the crack stove. There's my pan. So I'm gonna get my butter melted. It's gonna start sauteing my garlic, my mushrooms, and that paste into each other. I'm gonna get that all mixed up, nice and cooked up, and then I'm gonna add in my heavy whipping cream and my Parmesan cheese, and then of course, my white wine. So I'm gonna show you that process here in just a second. It's very important that you do it in the right order. Ooh, our coconuts are coming along nicely. Just to be safe, because I really do not want this stuff to stick, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this flip these fish over. Ooh, that looks delicious already. Just look at the color of that meat, everybody. You can see that one side starting to get pretty done. You can see that fat starting to render to the top. It's a perfect time to flip. Let's get our sauce made. So because of the wind, I've moved this process to the floor of the boat. It never fails on a catch and cook if the weather takes a turn right at the time of cooking. So the wind just picked up quite a bit, but we're gonna still do this for you guys anyways, because I vouched to cooking this meal in the middle of the lake. So we got a nice saute going. Look at that. We're kind of, we're turning, we're breaking necks out here on the water. Everybody's turning and wondering who the hell is cooking that amazing smelling food. It's us. All right, we got a good saute going on our mushrooms and our garlic. Now it goes in the heavy whipping cream and I'm using about half of this because I'm not making a huge dish today. But if you're making it for more than about four people, you're gonna want to use probably that whole jug of heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna add that in, about half of it there. 
I'm gonna let that come to a boil and then it'll start to foam up. So great, as soon as it does start to foam up, I'm gonna add my white wine and just a splash of it. I'm actually gonna just do that now to get it out of the way. Just a splash of that white wine in there for flavor. Don't go too heavy on that or it's kind of all you'll taste is that white wine flavor. And what I'm using here is a Cupcake Vineyards Butterkiss Chardonnay. Really is a cooking wine. You can go into a, any grocery store and ask them what wine would work best for cooking and they'll, they'll head you in the right direction for the Chardonnay. So I'm gonna let that heat up and then in is gonna go my cheese. Now that we have our stuff boiling here, you can see it start to foam up. I'm gonna start taking my Parmesan. And the key is do not stop mixing this stuff until it is all melted into that broth because it'll start to clot up and you'll just get big chunks of Parmesan cheese in there. So I'm gonna use quite a bit. Granulated works the best. I just found shredded today at the store, which is gonna work just fine for us. So keep mixing until that stuff comes and is all mixed together and there's no more chunks of cheese or stringiness in the bottom of that pan. So be sure to be scraping it off the bottom because you do not want that cheese to burn to the bottom of that pot. They say a wash pot never boils. I beg to differ. Now that we're boiling, in goes the fettuccine noodles. Just gonna do a couple of nice handfuls of these. These again, these are homemade, so they do not take very long to cook. Ooh, actually, I almost did the cardinal sin. I'm gonna add just a little scoop of butter in there so that that doesn't stick together. Nobody likes a sticky nude. And in goes my nudes. And then I'm gonna let these things cook till they're all done taste. All right, ladies and gents, the meal is al dente. This could be a recipe for disaster, but I've done it before. Just make sure not to get it on your feet. Okay, nudes look wonderful. Let's set those down, turn our stove off. Time to dish up, ladies and gentlemen. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the most gourmet kokanee catch and cook you've ever seen in the middle of the lake. Let's eat. Okay, the time has come, and I could not freaking wait to bite into this, you guys. I'm drooling, I can hardly talk. It's over, I'm done talking, it's time to eat. Look at this, look at the color of that meat. Let's get a mushroom, let's get some, some sauce. If I could cuss on this channel, which I can, I would. This is really good. Holy cripes. That skin is really the best part, I feel like. That's such a nice flavor to this whole meal. The morels are obviously unbelievable. The Alfredo sauce is next level. And the clash of flavor is out of this world. If you guys ever get a chance to go catch a kokanee, definitely take it. They, these things exist almost everywhere in the US. Not, not in the south, of course, but they are all over the place. So check in if you have these in your local area. And uh, if you get a chance to go catch these things, it may be the closest thing in your area you can find towards salmon. And it is all just as good. I cannot wait to catch some more of these bad boys. Just look at that. Bite of the century. Mmm. Ladies and gents, this might be my favorite catch and cook we've done so far. Unbelievable, and what a great day. So once we finish this meal, everybody, we're taking this boat, loading it up, and we're going to another lake just up from here. So be on the lookout for the next video coming out. We're doing a really cool camping video, and if you didn't see the last one that came out before this, we're doing a video series where we're going and finding the best and coolest campsites in the Pacific Northwest. So that is gonna be another video that we're making next where we're gonna take the boat to a private island, this miniature island in the middle of this giant lake and stay there for the night and have an awesome camping trip. So be sure to be on the lookout for that on this channel here. And I wanna thank you guys so much for joining us here today. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, be sure to go down and go into the channel and find more of these catch and cooks and find more great recipes like we made here today. So until next week, same time, same place, you all stay fishy. We'll see you out there.